Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical and welcome back to a, another video. Today for you guys, I wanted to talk about the Dengeki PlayStation uh, interview with Tetsuya Nomura that came out back in November of 2020. Now, uh, this came out specifically on November 18th and you guys will remember that uh, shortly before November 18th, I ended up going on my hiatus, which means that I never got around to talking about this news and information. And it's not so much trying to dig up old information or anything like that, but more so uh, talk about the major thing that was talked about in this interview, which is the whole Kingdom Hearts uh, going on a hiatus for this year, and that the 20th anniversary should be full of new announcements. This was kind of recently being brought back into light with E3 that has been and gone. With, of course, a major event like E3, it naturally goes through the brains of all the fans in the community, even though Tetsuya Nomura said that the Kingdom Hearts series is going on a bit of a break. Just what if? What if E3 might be host to some new spicy crispy chicken? Now, of course, E3 has been and gone, and yeah, there wasn't any new announcement or anything like that. Uh, we out here clowning, but I thought I would talk about this because uh, I haven't given my five cents. There are some interesting points here, especially for those of you who maybe perhaps didn't catch this news and information. Just gives me a chance to talk about my opinions on which. So let's talk about the big juicy chicken in the coop right here, which is obviously Nomura talking about how the series is going on a bit of a hiatus. So Nomura said, after the release of Melody of Memory, the series will probably take a little break until 2022. 2022 marks the 20th anniversary of Kingdom Hearts, so I plan to share some great news by then. So I know that a lot of people before E3 were talking about how perhaps maybe we've misinterpreted exactly what Tetsu Nomura is saying. Does this mean that there is absolutely nothing until 2022? Or does he mean that basically there is going to be something in 2022 and that there will be announcements and reveals sometime this year? Now, in my opinion, I honestly do believe that, yeah, there is going to be a year's break for the Kingdom Hearts series. What I will say though is if we do get absolutely anything throughout this year, I would look specifically at the Tokyo Game Show or Jump Festa, Tokyo Game Show happening in September and Jump Festa happening in December, but even in regards to that, I wouldn't expect too much. I would expect maybe a logo or like a title card basically just saying the Kingdom Hearts series resumes with announcements, not necessarily a new installment, in 2022 to celebrate the 20th anniversary. No more, no less. I wouldn't really expect some kind of 40-second uh, teaser or like some small trailer or anything like that because we do know that Tetsuya Nomura is pretty hard at work as well as Square Enix as a whole. Tetsuya Nomura has a lot of projects going on at the moment for one. We know that there are multiple Kingdom Hearts teams. We have one team working on the next major Kingdom Hearts game and another team that is working on, of course, Dark Road, though very possible. They're also working on something else too. There is also the upcoming Neo The World Ends With You that Nomura has been working on, and of course the big boy Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2. We also know that that game is currently in development as well. And also not to mention the recently revealed Final Fantasy Origins Stranger of Paradise. We do know that Nomura has ties to that project too. Nomura is most definitely a multitasker, but it doesn't mean that he can split himself into three different entities and work on all three different projects at one time. This man needs some time and space and breathing room to be able to cycle around and go from one to another. And as we know, Nomura has been pretty hard at work with the Kingdom Hearts series over the past few years whilst also juggling the Final Fantasy VII Remake with the release of that last year. So it really only makes sense that Nomura would step away from Kingdom Hearts for a year to be able to, of course, focus on some other things due to just how busy the series has been recently. Also thinking about it too, like, it's not like we haven't had anything this year either. I mean, we've had the release of the entire Kingdom Hearts series on PC, which is a major, major step forward uh, for the franchise as a whole. We also had the finale of Union Cross, which in itself was absolutely massive with the story reveals that were shown in that 
As well as that, we've also got Dark Road continuing sometime in September. Even though Nomura says that certain things, I wouldn't always take what he says at face value, but I do honestly believe what he's saying right here uh, when he mentions that there won't really be anything until the 20th anniversary, the year of 2022. I think what people are trying to figure out though is, does this mean that we will just get announcements in 2022 and then no game release, or is there going to be announcements for the 20th anniversary as well as the game release? Now, keeping in mind, I think there is a bit of a misconception when it comes to the release to reveal cycle for a Kingdom Hearts game, because generally speaking, it's anywhere from a year to a year and a half. Kingdom Hearts 3 has created this misconception due to its insanely long reveal to release period from 2013 through to 2019. Of course, there was an engine switch, but overall, uh, they really did reveal the project way too early. For the next Kingdom Hearts game, which will likely be getting revealed next year, I would say that the release to reveal period could potentially be within that year if they do want to ensure that the game releases for the 20th anniversary. As we know, for the 10th anniversary, we got Dream Drop Distance. However, of course, that game was revealed the year prior. I would say it's likely too, though, that Tetsuya Nomura and the team have learned not to reveal projects specifically for Kingdom Hearts uh, too early, just due to what happened with Kingdom Hearts 3. And that now also keeping in mind too, uh, with the team knowledgeable on the Unreal Engine, they know the ins and outs of how it works, the groundwork and foundation for a Kingdom Hearts game is already there and created within the Unreal Engine, it means that the development cycle for the next Kingdom Hearts game will be insanely faster. My honest opinion on this though is I believe the 20th anniversary will be filled with reveals and announcements that should lean into specifically the next major console based Kingdom Hearts game. Though I'd like to imagine that this next major title will come out within the 20th anniversary, I'm also thinking that the year will be filled of promotion towards that and then hopefully sometime in 2023, maybe earlier halfway through the year, we will get the actual release of which. It's quite possible too that uh, because of the way that Square Enix works, we might even be looking at another mobile game. I hate to admit it, but Square Enix love the mobile phone or potentially maybe a bigger larger project that the Kingdom Hearts Union Cross team may be potentially working on, which I'd like to assume would be a potential Kingdom Hearts Reunion Key type remake project. That would be fantastic. Then have the next major Kingdom Hearts title release sometime early 2023. Again, I do feel like there might be a slight little 0.0002% chance that we could get something at either Jump Festa or the Tokyo Game Show, but I honestly wouldn't hold your breath for that, and if it is something, it will be something very minuscule. Now there's also three other things that were brought up in this interview that I felt like we should share because they are pretty interesting. So the first one right here is, uh, the interviewer was talking about how the Kingdom Hearts series ended up skipping the PlayStation 3 and the PS Vita. This is what Nomura had to say about it. I had some foggy ideas to release new titles on the PlayStation 3 and PS Vita, especially since the PS Vita a reportable console packed quite the beefy hardware and could stand up to the task. However, those plans never fully materialized, mostly because at the time I was involved in Final Fantasy Versus 13's development. So yeah, it is a pretty sad thing that Kingdom Hearts just completely skipped the PlayStation 3 era. I remember leading up to the PS3, all of the fan-made box arts and um, ideas of like possibly and most likely Kingdom Hearts 3 coming to the system. Man, those were the good old days. But we of course did get the HD remixes 1.5 and 2.5, but Nomura uh, did have some ideas for full-blown new Kingdom Hearts installments for the PS3. However though, looking at the PS Vita, he did actually say that uh, he did have some plans for the Vita, which was most likely 0.2 birth by sleep. And I honestly, honestly, honestly wish we got a Kingdom Hearts game on the Vita. I love the Vita so much, it's unfortunate what happened with it. There just wasn't enough support from specifically Sony themselves, and also it just wasn't selling too well. I think most of that comes down to the Sony support and Sony not properly uh, promoting this piece of hardware, but it was a very, very beefy, uh, really cool piece of technology for its time, and honestly still to this day, it is. And to 
have some kind of uh, Soul Kingdom Hearts title on the Vita way back when would have just been the coolest thing. The interviewer then asked, is the new Kingdom Hearts game going to take advantage of the powerful technologies boasted by the new PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X? Nomura said, we can't say we have plans to do so as of now, but if Kingdom Hearts were to come to these new generation consoles, it would most certainly be a latecomer. Now, personally, what I feel like Nomura is meaning by this is, for one, you guys can see uh, what KH13 have bracketed right here. Basically, the game isn't likely to come out in the first year of the console's release, uh, which I think is one thing he's meaning. Uh, but the other side of what I think he's meaning is, I think the next Kingdom Hearts game that we do get will also end up releasing uh, on Xbox One as well as PS4 as well. I know most of you guys are probably thinking, get slang it. Because uh, by then, most people will have uh, the new consoles. I don't think that will be too much of an issue. But of course, a lot of people will still be using old generation hardware, PS4, Xbox One. But we do know that these consoles still get supported for quite some time, even once a new console has released. The previous generation always sees it through for quite some time. And we know, of course, that Square Enix was still releasing uh, titles on the PS3, even when the PS4 was out. But I know what you're thinking, dang it, it, it's not going to utilize that SSD and the hardware and all that kind of nonsense. I mean, still so, it means that more sales get made. Uh, I think there probably will be, obviously, some benefits to uh, playing on these next-gen systems, but in the sense of having a fully blown new Kingdom Hearts title uh, that is primarily on these systems, I think that's sort of what he's meaning to a degree of it might not be until the game after the next one where it is solely a PlayStation 5 Xbox Series X title. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was Nomura's comment on the way in which the Kingdom Hearts story is going to drastically change. So he said right here in the near future, I plan to change the story drastically, as in change the structure on how it's told in a way that can grab all the pending mysteries. The objective here is to try out a brand new story while still integrating the plots and mysteries that are currently pending. Now. I do believe that this is directly referring to that of Verum Rex, Yuzora. Obviously, we know at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, it has taken a massive turn, a very unexpected one, in the sense of where the story is currently heading. Heading into this alternate parallel dimension of sorts known as Unreality Quadratum, which is clearly integrating a lot of previous ideas that Nomura had for specifically Final Fantasy Versus 13. That in itself is massive, but I think what is more so interesting right here is just the whole comment on the story structure. So to me personally, it does seem as if this next saga will of course have a massive focus on Yuzora, but at the same time without forgetting the pre-existing known main characters of Kingdom Hearts, Sora, Riku, Kairi, and the gang, right? But I do feel like this saga will also have a massive emphasis on Yozora, with even potentially having a full-blown game where it primarily focuses on him. We know that the Master of Masters is within his world. What kind of threat the Master poses to the world of Unreality is unknown, though, with him putting his sort of fingers over the moon uh, in a heart shape. It kind of sends a little bit of danger in my opinion. What's your plans here, big guy? But it would be interesting to see if we do get some kind of setup where for one complete installment we play as Yuzora, and then for the next installment we then dip back into the shoes of Sora. Imagine if it was a sort of setup where one title is a Yuzora game, the next one is a Sora game, but uh, for both titles, they're actually happening at the same time. It's just they each focus on the different perspectives of what's happening with each character. Of course, still so though, Nomura is going to be trying to tell a new story with all of these new characters in the Yozora universe going on, which I am so excited for. But there's still a lot of lore and stuff to cover that has gone unanswered so far, specifically with everything that we saw within the Kingdom Hearts Union Cross finale. I'm really interested to know what he means by this whole new story structure things. The Kingdom Hearts games have always worked in a way of, whether it be a main numbered title or a subtitled title, it always generally progresses the story forward, so in the sense of the actual structuring, is it going to be, like I mentioned before, the idea of having two separate games but they're happening at the same time, just different perspectives? It's really going to be interesting to see and also to see how the team is going to juggle all of this lore that has gone unanswered so far whilst introducing a brand new story 
at the same time. Now, guys, that's all for today's video. I'm happy that I'm finally able to give my opinion on these things that I missed out on. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. But yes, uh, I think as of right now, it's just a case of being patient. We do know for a fact that next year is, of course, the 20th anniversary of Kingdom Hearts, and that it should be a pretty big year in regards to that of new Kingdom Hearts information. However, guys, that is all for today. I'm Cynical. Hopefully you're having a damn good one, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.